So there are no women in Moby Dick, uh, but there are three women in this adaptation of Moby Dick, and the director, David, has explained it in a really beautiful way that this kind of feminine energy is appealing in the same way that fate is to these men, kind of like the sirens that can lure you into something that you know better. From the top of the show, we seem as though we could be one of the characters on the streets, one of the widows or mothers, sisters waving goodbye to the sailors as they leave, but as the story continues, it's revealed that we are actually the driving force behind every decision that is made for these characters. If you put Ahab in the middle of a tug of, tug of war between the fates and Starbuck, the debate that comes to mind is, is it written, what we are to do, or can we make a choice? I think in that context, Starbuck ends up being on the choice side, that we have control over our destiny. All we have to do is think it through and make the right decision. Whereas the fates are sort of, um, that's it. <laughs> from, from the start, it's been written and, and uh, we're, you know, you're, you're out of control. You just need to yield. In a way, Moby Dick is, for Ahab, it is his fate, right? It's his immutable fate. He cannot change it he must, must meet Moby Dick. It's a very masculine story, right? It's very much about men uh, leaving the society that, ha that has wife and children, uh, families, and choosing to, to, to go out and do this, what they think of as a noble, heroic task, to brave danger. And I thought by having a female presence through the fates, that would actually help highlight that a little bit. And there's little things that we do that hopefully bring that into focus. Mm -hmm.